In this video, I shall be introducing what are known as deductive and inductive arguments. First off, let's make this basic. What is an argument? An argument is defined as a group of statements in which some of them, the premises, are intended to support another statement, the conclusion. Now, let me be clear that an argument is not a quarrel, bickering, or verbal fighting of any kind. When we use the word argument in logic, this is not what we mean. Let's move on to deductive arguments, and then we'll move on to inductive arguments. First off, what are deductive arguments, and how do they work? A deductive argument is an argument whose conclusion necessarily follows from the truth of the premises. We say that a deductive argument is valid if it is successful in providing logical support for its conclusion. A valid deductive argument is such that if all the premises are true, it is guaranteed that the conclusion must also be true. This means that if all the premises are true, there is no logically possible way that the conclusion could be false. We say that a deductive argument is invalid if the truth of the premises does not guarantee that the, con that the conclusion must be true. Now, let me make it clear that in logic we do not use the word valid as a synonym for true. It is entirely possible for a valid deductive argument to be false. To claim that an argument is a deductively valid argument only means that the argument has the a deductive logical structure. Logical structure doesn't actually refer to the actual contents of an argument, but to its construction, the particular way the premises and the conclusion fit together. The logical structure of a deductive argument is always truth-preserving. By this, I mean the truth of the premises are preserved onto the conclusion. Here are some rather simple valid deductive arguments. Premise 1 all politicians are liars. Premise 2. Jim is a politician. Conclusion. Therefore, it follows that Jim is a liar. Premise 1. All men are mortal. Premise 2. Socrates is a man. Conclusion. Therefore, it follows that Socrates is mortal. In each of these following arguments, if the premises are true, the conclusion must also be true. It is impossible for the premises to be true and for the conclusion to be false. The conclusion follows directly from the premises, and the order of the premises makes no difference. A deductively invalid argument might go something like this. All politicians are liars, premise 1. All used car salesmen are liars, premise 2. Therefore, it follows that all politicians are used car salesmen, conclusion. Premise 1. If Socrates has no teeth, then he is mortal. Premise 2. Socrates is mortal. Premise th er, conclusion. Therefore, Socrates has no teeth. In all of these invalid arguments, the conclusion does not logically follow from the premises. Each of these arguments was attempting to make a valid deductive argument, but the attempt failed. Furthermore, these arguments would be invalid regardless of the order of the premises. Now, what is an inductive argument? An inductive argument is an argument that is intended to provide probabilistic support for its conclusion, but not logically conclusive support for its conclusion. An inductive argument is such that if all the premises are true, the conclusion is possibly true or likely to be true, but not necessarily true. We say that if an inductive argument succeeds in providing probable, but not logically necessary support for its conclusion, then it is said to be strong. If an inductive argument fails to provide good support for its conclusion, we call it weak. 
the argumentative structure of an inductively strong argument does not guarantee that if all the premises are true, the conclusion must necessarily be true. However, if the conclusion is highly probable, then it should be generally accepted. We say that when a good inductively strong argument has true premises, they are co the argument is cogent. Bad inductive arguments are not cogent. Due to the fact that the truth of an inductive argument's conclusion cannot be guaranteed by the truth of its premises, inductive arguments are not truth-preserving. Now, let me give you an example of inductively strong arguments. Premise 1. Most dogs have fleas. Premise 2. Bowser is a dog. Conclusion. Therefore, Bowser probably has fleas. Premise 1. 98% of snails are slimy. Premise 2. There is a snail in my garden. Conclusion. Therefore, it follows that the snail in my garden is highly likely to be slimy. Be aware that it is entirely possible for these premises to be true in these inductive arguments and for the conclusion to be false. After all, just because most dogs have fleas doesn't mean that Bowser does, because it is possible that he is one of the few dogs that don't have fleas. Also, just because 98% of snails are slimy doesn't mean that the snail in my garden is necessarily slimy, because he might be part of that 2% of snails that aren't slimy. Good deductive arguments have valid logical structure. However, there is more to deductive arguments than good logical structure. Good deductive arguments also have true premises. To make this point hit home, look at the following argument. Premise 1. All pigs can fly. Premise 2. Charles is a pig. Conclusion. Therefore, it follows that Charles can fly. The premises of these, this argument I've just given are quite obviously false, but the conclusion that Charles can fly logically follows from the premises of the argument. It's a deductively valid argument with good logical structure, but it's a bad argument because the premises are false. A good deductive argument must have true premises. We say that a good deductively valid argument with true premises, we call this a sound argument. A sound argument is a good argument which gives you good reasons for accepting its conclusion. However, uh, we must note that deductively valid arguments can have true or false premises and true or false conclusions. Deductively valid arguments can have a false can have false premises and a false conclusion they can have false premises and a true conclusion, and it can have true premises and a true conclusion. Here are some a few examples. Uh, false premises and false conclusion. Premise 1. All fish have wings. Premise 2. All fish are dogs. Conclusion. Therefore, it follows that all dogs have wings. False premise, true conclusion. All crows don't have wings. Premise 2. Everything that doesn't have wings is black. Conclusion. Therefore, all crows are black. True premises, true conclusion. Premise 1. I have two feet. Premise 2. On each foot I have five toes. Conclusion. Therefore, I have ten toes. As you are probably aware of, the support a deductive argument gives for its conclusion is absolute. Either a deductive argument is demonstrably true or it is not true. There is no possible sliding scale of truth or falsity. However, as the support an inductive argument gives is probabilistic and not logically necessary, the likelihood of truth for an inductive argument goes on a scale from very unlikely, possible, probable, likely, and highly unlikely. And if one wanted to be technical, you could give numerical percentages for this. Okay, 
that sums up the introduction to inductive and deductive arguments. I hope this makes some of the basic fundamentals of logic and argumentation clear to you. And if you want a brief review, I'll put some uh, helpful review notes in the video description.